Hello, everyone. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about estimating fine particulate matter using a new set of instrument called GOSI. So we'll start with. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so we'll start with a brief introduction. Um, so we'll start with some brief introduction to the background. Um, fine particulate matter, or PM2.5, refers to particles in the atmosphere with diameter less than 2.5 microns. They're so small that when we breathe, they can, follow th they can follow the streamline of our breath, go all the way deep into lungs, and cause a variety of health problems, including cardiovascular diseases or even mortality. And WHO estimated that roughly 3.2 million people die prematurely due to PM2.5 every year. And East Asia is the worst with 1 million. Um, so that's why we want to have a comprehensive monitoring system to watch the PM2.5 concentrations from a general health perspective. Our current estimation of um, our current monitoring of PM2.5 mostly come from the ground measurements. So here's a map showing the, all the publicly available PM2.5 monitors from monitoring sites in China. Um, seems like there are a lot of monitors scattered, scattered all over. However, consider, considering the entire area of China, vast regions are still empty, which means the, the PM2.5 is not monitored. Um, so we don't know the concentration there, we can't assess the health impact there. And that's why we want to have a map like this showing the PM2.5 concentrations continuously all over China at every single place. But how can we get this? So satellite remote sensing is the key solution because satellite provides some continuous coverage that could perfectly overcome the spatial, very, uh, spatial limitation of ground monitors. Um, and then and then to get the PM2.5 from satellite remote sensing, here's the approach we use. Sorry, here's the approach we use. Um, Earth's optical depth, or AOD, refer is a mirror of light extinction in the atmosphere column due to the presence of aerosols, like PM2.5. And that's a pretty common retrieval in satellite remote sensing. So we get satellite AOD to multiply a ratio of PM2.5 to AOD, which can be simulated by a chemical transport model. So we end up with the satellite-derived satellite PM2.5. So specifically in my work, I use AOD from a new satellite instrument called GOSI and use um, GeoSCAN model to simulate the PM2.5 to AOD ratio. So we end up with the GOSI-derived PM2.5. And in the follow following presentation, I'm going to talk about this three times in more detail and start with some introduction to GOSI instrument. So GOSI refers to geostationary ocean color imager that flies on the Korean satellite. The most distinguishable feature of this satellite is that it's geostationary, which means it's moving synchronously with the Earth. So relatively like stationary. And because of that feature, GOSI is able to provide aerosol optical properties at hourly at hourly, hourly resolution over its, um, over, the uh, over its target region, including the eastern China, um, which is impossible for most of the other satellite, uh, satellite instruments, including MODIS or MISER. And in terms of the aerosol retrieval algorithm, GOSI determines the surface reflectance based on the second minimum reflectance over a period of time and identifies cloud by doing a spatial variability test and a threshold test. And we apply some additional textural filters to further eliminate cloud contamination in the GOSI data. And as to the GeoSCAM, uh, the GeoSCAM model, we do the simulation using the nested China simulation at a half by two thirds degree resolution driven by the GEOS5 meteorological data. And we also implemented the most updated um, update emission inventory for China, as well as a new sulfate formation mechanism that accounts for the sulfate formation on aerosol surfaces. So with everything here, we have the GOSI AOD, we have the PM2.5 to AOD ratio from GeoSCAM. We're not going to see their performance by comparing with ground measurements. So here's, um, we do the comparison at two stations, Beijing and Taiwan. Combined means it's a combination of two stations due to the lack of data at individual stations. Um, so as we can see from the 
as of in the uh, AOD comparison plot, the small numbers here represent the number of observations in each month. And as we can see from this AOD comparison plot, the GOSI AOD captures the seasonal variation in internet AOD at both stations, uh, whereas the bias, in, however, the bias in Taiwan is slightly larger than in Beijing, probably due to the short of um, observations in each, in each month. And in terms of the ratio comparison, we take the ground ratio as the PM25 from a monitor divided by AOD from a close by internet station. Uh, but keep in mind that the GOC, I'm sorry, the GSCAM ratio and the ground ratio are in different years, they all, even though they all cover one year data. So back to the ratio comparison. Um, GSCAM captures the seasonal variation of, um, of the ground ratio in Beijing, but not much in Taiwan. And in terms of the bias, um, the RMSE and MFB, which is defined here, in Taiwan is slightly smaller than in Beijing. Um, so keep those in mind. We're not good to see, put them together and see the performance of GOSI derived PN25. So here's a map showing the annual mean GOSI derived PM2.5 um, over the entire eastern China for 2013 as the background color. The circles represent the ground monitors, and the field colors represent the, uh, the annual mean of ground monitors, uh, of ground measurements. So both GOSI and ground, me ground measurements indicate the highest PM2.5 concentration of this region in eastern China. And then we do a monitor by monitor validation of GOSI derived PM25 as shown in this scatter plot. Um, the correlation coefficient between GOSI estimation of PM25 and in situ PM25 is, is 0.86 with a slope close to unity, indicating that GOSI estimation of PM25 is in significant correlation with ground measurements. And it's also worth mentioning that the in-situ PM2.5 is better represented by GOSI than by GSCAM model on its own. And now we're good to go a little further to see the seasonal and monthly variation of GOSI-derived PM2.5. Here's a map showing the seasonal mean GOSI-derived PM2.5 as the background color, still for 2013 over eastern China. And the, uh, the circles are still the monitors. So both GOSI and measurements indicate the highest PM2.5 PM concentration in winter and the uh, lowest concentration in summer. And then we took four regions from the map to further see their uh, monthly PM2.5 variation. So the four regions on the map from top to bottom corresponds to Beijing and surrounding regions, Shandong province, and Shanghai and surrounding regions, and Taiwan province. So from the monthly comparison, we can see that um, GOSI, uh, the Go, uh, in terms of the bias of the GOSI estimation of PM2.5, the RMSE ranges from point, uh, sorry, ranges from 12 in Taiwan to the highest 21 in Beijing. Um, and there are apparent seasonal variation at these three regions which is similar to what we saw on the map with high concentrations in winter and low in summer. But there's not apparent seasonal variation in Taiwan probably, probably due to, because of the temperature is more stable there. And then as to the reasons for the seasonal variation, um, of course meteorology plays an important role as the, mix, the height of mixing layer um, changes with the temperature. And then in addition to that, we take advantage of GSCAM and do uh, and did a chemical speciation simulation to the, to, to the GOSI-derived PN25, so as to understand the seasonal variation from a chemical, transfer, uh, from a chemical perspective. So the, here shows um, the, chemical, uh, the chemical speciation of GOSI-derived PN25 as represented by the solid colors here. The curves represent the monthly PN25 over the entire eastern China for 2013 um, from GOSI and ground measurements. So, in ter so as we can see from the state statistics here, um, the bias for the, the bias of GOSI derived PM25 over the entire eastern China is slightly smaller than 
in the four regions individually, as we saw on the previous slide. And there's also appearances and variations similar to what we saw just now. Um, but more interestingly, we see that the summer, I'm uh, sorry, the high PM25 concentration in winter is now strongly associated with a dramatic increase in the organic mass in PM25 concentration. And the model, in the, uh, the model simulation, in the, the model emission indicates that this dramatic increase in organic mass mostly come from the biomass burning for heating in winter in China. And there are also some other studies indicate that they, they also found there's a dramatic increase in organic mass in, in winter due to the biomass burning as well as the biofuel combustion in winter. Um, so as a conclusion, go see, um, thanks to the high temporal resolution, GOSI provides one of the most reliable estimation of PM2.5 so far over the eastern China. And that's it. Thanks for your attention. Any questions? Yeah. Can you say a question? Sorry, can you say a question? I can. I didn't hear the last part. So you're basically scaling the model PM2.5 ratio of AOEs. Is the model underestimating AOE by a factor of two? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? The model AOD, the model AOD. Is the model AOD a factor of two lower than the satellite AOD? Roughly. Um. No, I don't think so. Why, why do you come, come up with that number? I'm just asking. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't think it has that much bias. No. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah. So you're saying the GOSI AOD is kind of overestimating? The, the, and how do I come up with the GOSI derived PM25 with accurate? I think the model can correct some of the bias in the GOSI AOD to some extent. Yes. 